to my channel. This is Desiree and thank you so much for watching. Today's video is going to be on your child's needs and, you know, parenting and how to deal with children based on their moon sign. And I have been getting a lot of questions about um, this type of a thing. Usually when I have consultations or when I deal with mothers and fathers, they are very, you know, they show me their child's chart and they're like, why uh, is, is this happening with my, you know, with my child, my daughter, my son? And how can I, you know, better deal with them, better work with them on this? So usually the first thing that I look to is the child's moon sign. Their moon sign is going to tell you what their needs are, what their instincts are, and it's usually how the child is behaving um, very at, like at a young age because that is what they are learning. You know, they're learning how to be emotional. They're learning what they need, what they want, um, you know, and what they what they need to feel nurtured and safe. So we'll start with the Aries moon. Now an Aries moon child, they need to be given challenges to, you know, feel like they're accomplishing things, to feel happy. So giving them, you know, some type of little job or task or something that they can figure out, like a challenge of some sort, even if it's like a sporting activity, just some type of a challenge where they can feel like they have a goal to meet. Aries love to meet goals, so they learn that from a young age. You know, they want to they want to achieve and they want to win. And so giving them that right away is really beneficial for their um, emotional growth. They also do need a lot of discipline. Now, Aries moon children, they can be a little bit ornery, um, you know, feisty, hot-headed. They can get angry. So they definitely appreciate discipline. They, because if they, if it was up to them, they would do whatever they want probably all the time, causing a ruckus and, you know, causing mayhem wherever they go. So I think that they really appreciate when there are, you know, disciplinary rules in place, things that they can follow, guidelines. It is showing your child love when you have some discipline. You know, children, of course, they want to be completely free, but it's not the best thing for them. So they will thank you later on if you were able to provide some boundaries and some really great, like, discipline for them um, just to show that you, you love them and you want the best for them. Now, Aries Moon children also need some adventure and they definitely need to feel like they are, you know, on an, an adventure hunt or a, a hunt of some sort like I was just thinking like an easter egg hunt <laughs> they they just need some type of a, a new adventure that they can look forward to that they can conquer and you know that they can experience I think having some new things in you know in their routine every once in a while something a little bit adventurous and fun and dangerous you know dangerous for a kid um, can really you know make them feel emotionally like they're happy and like they are able to explore that with your support. Now for our Taurus moon children, they do really need um, comfort. You know, they need to have some type of a comfortable space where they can spend their time. If it's like a room that they have or an area that they have in the house, some, some type of place where they can be really comfortable, be themselves, you know, get nice and cozy, do some reading, um, you know, watch some TV, do something that they really enjoy doing and allowing them that, um, you know, that space to do that. So let them be comfortable. Let them be who they are and definitely encourage them, you know, making their own little spaces. Like I think a Taurus moon child would love to make like a little fort or a little like playhouse or something like that, like an area in the yard even. Some type of a place where they can kind of make their own little home out of and that they are able to do, you know, whatever they want to do in there and have, um, you know, their imagination kind of take over. Now Taurus moon children, I think they also really do need structure in their life. Tauruses, they like to know what to expect. You know, the Taurus moon child likes to, they don't want to be surprised. You know, they want to know what's coming. They want to have a an idea of, okay, this is um, our schedule. This is the, the routine for the day. So having some type of a structured, um, you know, format for these kids to follow, like, okay, now we're doing your homework. Now we're doing this. Now we're doing that. And, you know, giving them their boundaries that they kind of need to stay within for that time period. Period, um, can make them feel uh, a little bit more in control and have like less anxiety because if the Taurus moon child feels like they don't have any rules and like they can do whatever they want all of the time um, they may get into like a lazy route and they won't be able to build and grow like they like a Taurus should you know like grow and 
nurture where they want to study and like what they want to learn about you know because they'll just feel i think a little bit like lazy if they don't have a parent parental figure who puts structures in place and like rules for them it's hard for them to like make that on their own sometimes until they're older definitely so a Taurus moon child, I think they also really do need support. I think that um, number one for a Taurus moon is having a great support system to help guide them and to help kind of, um, you know, direct that energy that they have because they want to build something. They want to learn. They want to study. They want to, you know, nurture something. And they they just have to kind of find out what that is. So once they have found what they, what they like and what they want to do, um, having like a supportive family to support their creativity or to support their goals, their dreams, whatever it is, is just so crucial because it kind of helps them stay on track. And if they are being validated in the decisions that they're making and they're supported in that, then they can achieve, you know, a lot more. So just being supportive of whatever they want to do, you know, as long as it's it's not endangering someone else or themselves, then um, definitely just being supportive is so meaningful to a Taurus moon child. Now for a Cancer Moon child, Cancer Moon children, they need someone to talk to about their emotions. They, you know, if they are holding everything in and trying to be strong, trying to be tough, and they're not able to get out what they're feeling to, you know, their parents or to someone, you know, that they're like a counselor or a close friend, then they can really bottle those things up and it can be harmful later in life. So making sure you're talking to them about how they're feeling and helping them kind of uncover that depth of what's going on. Because sometimes the Cancer Moons, they will be feeling a lot of things, but sometimes they've gotten so used to pushing it into, into the back or stuffing it or just not talking about it, not being comfortable with talking about it. So you've really got to make a safe place for the Cancer Moon child to feel like they can express their feelings and their emotions and that, that it's like totally healthy. Now a Cancer Moon child also really needs to feel safe. So they need um, a safety system, you know, a home that they can feel comfortable and safe in. If your house, you know, has people coming over all the time who, you know, are dangerous or, you know, if you have just anything like that, you know, if you have any type of a uh, um, dangerous environment for the child, they will definitely kind of close up and put their walls up around them and it will not be good for them, you know, long term. So just making it as a priority. And I mean, every parent should want their child to feel safe, but for your cancer mooch, you know, child, I think making them, in, giving them a safe environment, making them feel really comfortable to be themselves and to share themselves and to, uh, you know, do what they want to do is just so crucial to their growth. Now, Cancer Moon Child also really craves um, unconditional love. They want validation. You know, they want to be loved for who they are. They want to be seen for who they are. And they don't want to have to, like, earn that. So a lot of times parents are like, well, you know, you do this and do this and do that and then I'll love you. And that is just so damaging, I think, for a Cancer Moon because they are, they're, they're innately just... They want to be like love. They love the parents. They love, you know, their family. And they want that like family environment. They want that cozy nest and they want to feel that unconditional love and support. So if it's not being given to them and they have to earn everything that they that they receive, then it can be pretty painful, especially down the line um, that they have to deal with it. Now for your Leo Moon child, um, they definitely need to have a high level of laughter and fun in their home life and from their parents. You know, they need to be able to tell jokes and be themselves and just, you know, laugh and, and have fun, you know, play music, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Like they, you can't restrict a child. You know, if you have like a more depressive kind of um, style, you know, you like everything really peaceful and calm and quiet. And the Leo child just wants to like have fun. They want to dance. They want to joke. They want to laugh. So allowing them to do that, even if it's like uncomfortable for the parent is super important. You know, giving them space to do that, giving them time to do that. And, you know, making sure that they have, you know, ability to do all of those things and to be themselves. That's just so important to the Leo moon child. Now, a Leo Moon child also needs a creative outlet. 
So giving them some type of creative projects or tasks or things to do around the house is just so important for these ch for these children because the Leo moon is just naturally a creative, you know, naturally they will have um, some type of hobby that they want to do or they'll have that energy that they don't know what to do with. So helping them to guide that, like, do you want to do music? Do you want to do art? Do you want to sing? Do you want to dance? Like, whatever it is, like, do you want to, you know, giving them lots of like little projects, little art projects, or just creative hobbies that they can play with to find what is really the best for them. Now, these children also really need admiration. They need to be admired. They need to be complimented. They need to be reassured for what they are doing. So a Leo Moon child will feel like they are not enough or like they are not um, you know, being appreciated for who they are and what they're doing if you're not giving them that validation and that recognition that they really want. So it's just super important to give them lots of words of affirmation, compliments, um, tell them you know, when they do a good job, tell them what they can do better next time to do even better, to be the best them, and just really you know, admire and nurture that creativity that they have. Now for a, Vir a Virgo moon child, these children really do need routine. A routine is so important to them because if they, it's hard for them to actually get into a routine in the first place. So once they find one that works for them and that works for all of the parents and everything, it's, you know, it's really crucial to their happiness if they can have like a set schedule or just not even super strict, but if they have like um, you know, if, if they're going from parent to parent, you know, back and forth type of thing, have it be more, um, you know, more seamless if you can, like make it so that the transition is easier if you can in any way. And also just give them some choices. You know, these Virgo moon children are smart and they want to be a part of decisions. They want to be a part of what they do. You know, they don't want to just be told what to do. They can get very defiant if they're just being told what to do all the time and they don't have any say in what they're doing. So, you know, having a routine for them, but also giving them the opportunity to tell you when they need change or when they need to switch something up, when something's not working. Make sure you're constantly having those conversations with a Virgo. Um, I think Virgo moon children also do need some privacy, so making sure they have a space, a room, you know, their own room or a private space where they can do their creativity or do what they want to do. You know, maybe they want to organize in a certain way or do an art project or whatever it is, but I think sometimes the Virgo moons need to have some privacy to really be able to nurture that. They can be kind of shy about what they're doing, so don't just, you know, barge into their room or barge into where they are, um, you know, be being very like aware uh, and sensitive to the Virgo moon children so that they, um, you know, ask them what they want. You know, don't treat them like a child. Ask them for what they want. Ask them if you can enter. Ask them if, you know, and obviously you're the parent, so if you need to, go ahead. But, you know, making sure that you're making them feel like they're not just a, just a child. Basically, they don't want to be treated that way. Now, Virgo Moon children, they also do need a high level of safety and security. So if you are moving around a lot with them, like you're in a military family or something, or you just are frequently moving, that can be, you know, uncertain for them. They don't like uncertainty. They don't like when things are, when things are kind of hidden from them or, you know, when the rug's pulled from under them, they, they get things, they get in a routine, they get in a schedule, they make friends. So, you know, switching things up on them without fair warning is something that can be really damaging. And it just goes back to that safety. You know, they want to feel like they are safe and in control and they know what to expect. And so taking them out of that can be pretty hard for these Virgo Moon children. Now for your Gemini Moon child, uh, they definitely need a high level of communication with you. They need open communication. They need you to be supportive of their ideas. And I think, you know, just having that open dialogue, like some parents are just, you know, they wake up in the morning and they're like, hi, you know, and child's like hi you know and there's just not much more you know they can't they can't go further with their child like gemini moon children need to they, they will be the child who is constantly talking constantly chatting so if the parent can't keep up with it and if they can't you know support that they have to get the child into some type of a 
club or group or organization or, you know, some type of a system where they can have that interaction and that socialization that they really need. Gemini Mood Show Moon children also need parents who are very supportive of their ideas and who help them, you know, with, with what they want to do. So a Gemini Moon child will have like a fun, bright idea that they want to do. Like maybe they want, they're like, hey, I want to make a garden or a sand pit or just, you know, something like that, that's not too expensive to do probably. Like they have this idea. Um, they want to start making a leaf, you know, book, like something in science or something like that. I don't know. But they have an idea one day and the parents really need to encourage and support these ideas because um, the Gemini moons will suppress that if they're not able to express that and later in life that can be harmful. Now Gemini moons also need to have um, a level of rules set for them because Gemini moons will break the rules, they will cheat the rules, they will try their best not to follow the rules, but it's super important for parents still to set these ground rules for these people, for these children, um, you know, just because they they still need to have some type of a guideline, you know, they have to, you can't just have a Gemini moon running around free and doing whatever they want all the time because they will get distracted, you know, they have so many things that they want to be doing, but you kind of have to set like rules for them, like, okay, no, you've made your mind up about joining this sport or playing this instrument or whatever it is, and just because you're bored of it now, you know, the rule is that you decided this is what you want to do, so now you have to stick with it. And doing something like that is just super important for them because they need to learn how to stick with things and you know how to stay with things for the long term. Now for a Libra Moon child, um, Libra Moon children need to have a lot of socialization. So getting them into groups right away or getting them into some type of a um, after school or daycare program where they can have an interaction with other children or their siblings even you know, setting play dates for them. Early on, just having a, a level of social, you know, life to them. They, they want to have some type of social life and friends are really important to Libras. So this will definitely make them feel a lot better if they have friends around them. And if they're not, you know, an outcast or an only child, it will kind of set them back if they don't um, nurture that social need that they have. Now Libra moons, they do like a certain level of peace and harmony and so making sure that, you know, some parents like to have music blaring and TVs on and lots of people over and excitement and, you know, at times the Libra moon will love that but all, there are also times where they may want to have some peace, quiet, harmony and giving them space to do that is super important. So if they have their own bedroom or their own, you know, little space that they can go to and just have some time where they can, you know, focus on what they want to focus on, have some quiet time, like making sure to give them like, okay, well, now you've had all of this activity, all this socialization, all this fun. Now it's time for you to have your break time, your quiet time, your peace time where you can process things and you can, you know, have, have ideas come up and create start getting a little more creative so just setting those breaks for them is very important now of course for a libra moon child you need to have balance so um this comes in all forms uh with their food with their exercise with their toys and their playtime their discipline their structure you know it really has to be a balancing act because they can tip the scale pretty quickly. You know, if you are allowing them to just eat whatever they want, or if you are allowing them to have no discipline and just be playing all of the time, the child can kind of get, you know, into that routine and get a little bit lazy or, or get used to the sugary, unhealthy food. So it's just very important for them to not get to just pick what they want all the time, because if they could pick, they probably would choose sugar and they would choose cereal and they would choose, you know, just to play and watch TV all the time so making sure that you're incorporating incorporating that okay well now you've done this now it's time for this or you get either or today you know or you get to do this and then that so that they have um, you know they, they know that there is responsibility there are rules there are you know you have to eat your vegetables before you get your dessert or you have to you know clean your room before you get to watch TV just having that simple kind of like this or that set in place for them so that they don't just get into the habit of getting, you know, the the shiny, fun, beautiful things all the time. 
Now for your Scorpio moon children, um, these children need a high level of nurturing. I think that they need um, a really strong support system. They need to feel um, very like nurtured and understood because they can feel like an outcast sometimes. They can feel like they have this heaviness on them or that they don't understand, you know, that, you know, they're still learning about emotions. So sometimes maybe they can get into like overthinking or feeling, feeling a certain way for, for a reason that they might not know. So just having a parental figure, figure someone in their life who is very just nurturing, caring, um, you know, asking them how they're feeling, making sure that things are taken care of um, around them and, you know, supporting them, helping them do those things so that they don't get overwhelmed because they can definitely get a little bit like fearful or scared or anxious. So just helping to guide them and just making things a little bit more easy for them to figure out, like not doing things for them by any means, but just giving them like clear tasks that they can do so that they don't feel overwhelmed or scared or something like that. Now also, um, next would be to have open communication with your Scorpio moon children. I think these children can tend to stuff things and hide their emotions, hide their feelings, um, you know, and put things kind of away. So that's, that's not you know, beneficial for them or helpful for them in the future, especially if there is something going on with them at a young age or if they're dealing with some type of trauma, you know, making sure that you're constantly asking them and talking to them and just really having like a, a nice communication with them that they feel like they can share whatever with you and that they won't be judged. I think judgment is very, uh, you know, something that they deal with. So making sure that you are not being judgmental or passing, you know, any type of, you know, feelings like that to them, but that you are just listening to them, talking with them and making them feel safe to share with you. Now, Scorpio moon children, I think they also definitely need to have um, friends and like a social life because they can get into um, situations where, you know, or, or just routines that feel like a little bit isolating because they can sometimes be loners or be more introverted. So pushing them to do things that are out of their comfort zone or that make them, you know, make friends, make them get out of their safe zone is important for them at a young age so that they don't carry that on with them through their life. You know, being, being introverted and not having friends is okay, but at the same time, you don't want them to get stuck in that. You know, you want them to make choices and make smart choices about who they um, bring into their life and, you know, who they socialize with. Now for a Sagittarius moon child, they need to have a level of excitement and fun and adventure. So uh, making sure that you are filling that for, for them in some type of a way, you know, giving them little jobs or little projects or, you know, giving them some type of a fun, exciting thing that they can look forward to. You know, and it doesn't have to be something that is very expensive, but just, you know, an idea, like think of something that they haven't done before or think of something that they really love and, you know, allowing that to be sort of like, well, you know, after you do these things and then we're going to get to go do something really, really fun that you love to do or that you've never done before, kind of building up that excitement for them um, because they, they definitely thrive off of excitement. Now, I think it's also very important to nurture these Sag children, Sag moon children's, um, um, you know, their intellectual side and so making sure that you are um, allowing them time to read and study and really encouraging that and maybe even setting it as a priority for them because a lot of times kids don't want to read, you know, they don't want to study or do anything that's like boring like that. They want to have fun and these kids definitely you know, Sag moons, they want to have fun. So giving them like, okay, well, once you finish this book or once you finish these, um, you know, these, these books or these like little modules or whatever it is that they're studying, then we get to do this. So then it's like kind of coming full circle. They're learning, they're expanding their mind, but at the same time, they're looking forward to doing something you know, really fun. Now, I think for the Sag Moon children, another important thing for them is boundaries, just because they can get so excited and expansive and just want to do everything and want to. They're, they're the children at the grocery store who says hi to strangers and runs, you know, and, and says hi to everyone around them and has no da stranger danger. So setting these boundaries, making sure that they are learning um, safe boundaries with people, making sure they're learning, you know, their physical, like this is your body you don't touch other people, you don't talk to strangers. Obviously those things um, are important to teach to children, but for these children especially, um, they don't really have much fear of other people. So 
making sure that they are learning to, you know, stay with the family, that learning that, you know, not everyone out there is safe and that there is still some things that they, they can be more cautious about. Now for Capricorn corn moon children, these children will definitely need some type of discipline and need some type of structure. I think for most of the earth signs, that's very important for them. So Capricorn moon children definitely do really well when they have their rules set for them. So setting, you know, for the child, okay, well, this is your schedule and your routine. And if you go outside of that, there will be these consequences or you won't get to do this fun thing that you want to do. It's just important for them to have more of a structured like lifestyle because they they kind of crave that. You know, if they don't have that early on, they may get like off track and just not really know how to like direct that energy in a good way. So setting these rules for kids early on, especially Capricorn Moon um, children is very important because they will follow the rules. You know, they do appreciate rules. If they don't get rules early on, they can become people who who make their own rules. And you know, that's can, can be good or bad depending on how they go about that. But you, you just want to make sure that you are being very conscious of the rules that you set in place for these kids and that they are fair and that they are, you know, very measurable. I think also having like measurable goals for these kids is very important. Setting, um, you know, something like a, a chart where there are stars or some type of sticker or something that once you get to the end and you've done all of these, um, you know, things to get good stickers, then you get a prize or then you get a reward because they they really thrive by having okay this is this is done this is done this is done and now i get what i've been working really hard for hard work is always going to be something that a capricorn moon um, person or child is um is very important to them so if you can put that into like a fun way for a child to um, enjoy, then that can be very beneficial for them. You know, Capricorn moon children also need to be, um, they need a parent to be sensitive to them because sometimes they can not know how to express their emotions very well, or they can not really know what they're even feeling. They can kind of just be like, unsure about that whole area so helping them to you know being sensitive to them helping them to understand their feelings asking them how they feel maybe saying like well this happened and this happened today you know do you feel any kind of way how did your teacher make you feel and and just making sure that you're constantly like encouraging that um that area for them now for your aquarius moon children um these children definitely need they need freedom and they need space so giving them some type of an area in the house their room a little you know space where they can be free and kind of be alone I think these children definitely need some solitude so giving them the freedom to you know have their alone time and have their own space to do what they want to do is super important having some solitude as well like I mentioned is important for these children because they need to sometimes have time with their thoughts and alone so giving them some you know be like well we've had a lot of social time today you've had time at school you've had time with us you know now it's time for you to go in your room you can read a book you can have some quiet time you can you know organize you can play with your toys whatever you want to do but um, just giving them a little bit of time to like wind down because I think Aquarius moon children can get really like excited and you know riled up about what's going on around them in their social environment in the world so giving them that time to like decompress and really think and process things is very important. Now Aquarius and Moon children, they also need a non-judgment free zone. They need parents who are super not judgmental, you know, don't impose your religions or your thoughts or ideas or anything that you have that you believe in. Try not to like impose that on them to make them believe. Like of course, share with them what you love and what you are interested and passionate about, but let them make their own choices. These children need to be able to um, be decisive about what they want they need to have all of the options and make their own decisions so don't just think that you know you're going to bring your child into your religion or into your you know what you want them to do because they will rebel against that so making sure that you make it very clear that they you know they're supported in what they want to do and that you're you know more than happy to be there for them in that now for pisces moon children these children are super sensitive 
they can be very um, early, you know, early on in life, they can be very, um, very sensitive to other kids. So making sure that you are actually listening to what they tell you, because they will tell you how they feel, but sometimes they will start to realize that you don't, you're not listening, you don't care, you're not really like taking it in and like helping them with it. You're just saying, oh, well, tomorrow will be better or, you know, duh, duh. like, don't just be like positive to that, like listen to them and let them express what they're saying, let them express what they're feeling and don't minimize it. A lot of parents like, you know, someone will, a kid will say, well, someone stole my pencil and I was crying or whatever, whatever. Like, don't just say, oh, it's a stupid pencil. Like, do not do that to the Pisces moon child. You need to listen and like understand the pain that they were feeling as a child because their their minds their emotions are very different than ours and you know allow them to feel that and you know tell them you understand it and tell them that it's going to be okay and that that feeling that they had is perfectly normal and just to you know encourage them to um you know still be positive you know say i you know i understand oh, you're feeling that's so sad and you know really be there with them in that feeling but you know hold them and you know give Give them a kiss and just you know say you know we're gonna get through this and I have a new pencil for you or you know whatever it is <laughs> like just helping to them to make them actually feel better and not just like brushing it off as like it's not important. Now these children are also very creative so making sure that they have some time of an outlet where they can go to do their creativity and to really nurture that. Sometimes parents um, you know put more weight on like school studying, doing math, things like that. But there's also a really importance with these children that they need to also do do art and do something very creative so that they can release that energy. These children also can sometimes get overwhelmed. So they need to um, have some type of a fantasy realm where they can escape. So if you have like, again, a creative, like a creative hobby that they can do or some type of game or some type of toys where they can like really get into another like world and just like forget about all of the things that they were feeling or forget about different things and just kind of go into like a fun fantasy make-believe place these children will be really like into make-believe so making sure that you are nurturing that and you're not calling it like stupid or something when they want to like play make-believe or something with you or when they do want to do it by themselves just making sure that you are supporting that. So that is my take on um, what your children or what your child might need based on their moon sign and how you can help to support and nurture them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in booking a reading with me, my link is in the description box. Have a good day. Bye.